you said September, you went to St. Louis? September 1962. 1962. And that was your first time seeing Honorable Elijah Muhammad live and in person, yes, right? Sir. Now, for myself, I have never got a chance to experience that in that capacity. Can you kind of inform like the newer generation of that experience of actually getting a chance to see him live and in person, how it really impacted your life? Yeah. When I went to see him, <clears throat> I was kind of a, I was a kind of like we call a new believer. So after you're a new believer, uh, your head is really big like you, you know, all you could see was was him. In fact, uh, the Abu Elijah Muhammad, when I was going through his transition trying to find what, what I call in search of the, the miraculous. Uh, well, I just had already made a decision that whatever creative force that was out there, that if he, if he revealed to me what I should be doing, then I would, I would follow that the rest of my life and, and try to help others do the same thing. So I'd already made that decision before I heard came to the mosque. When I came to the mosque, that's when I realized this was what I was, what I was looking for. And uh, so, when, when you see the pictures and I'll be like, I'm be at the mosque, you see the pictures, you look like one day I'd like to see him. See him in person, then I found out that he was going to be in St. Louis. And I decided to go see him. But, <clears throat> but I, I seeing him and listening to him, what he was saying, I felt as if uh, like a deja vu type thing. Oh, this is what. I've been feeling all the time. It's, it's something that's already been generated. So when he came out to, to speak, I was so uh, inundated by the words, his choice of words. Because you have to be really listen to it. Uh, you, you can't just say that uh, the person is just talking in regular conversation. Because his words, uh, uh, to me, the word had more depth to him than the word was. It was more into what he said, and that it was deeper than what he, he really was saying the words. So I just felt like this is a, a God-given uh, message. It's to wake up everybody. And we, that particular time, I thought it wouldn't take too long to wake up to people with a message like this. It would be all over in a few days. But that didn't happen that way. Uh, but I just saw him, saw him again, uh, a man, in fact, uh, looked like a, a, to me when he walked up on the stage. I think he was at the Kilo Auditorium in the place, and uh, walked on the stage it's like he was a, like a light comes in. You know, like before he gets there, the people sitting there just talking and doing that. But before he before he comes in, it seemed like uh, to me like something never really happened. Like everything quieted down. And then he, he shows up like the uh, moving space tank. Like he's a, a, a sun moving with light on him, like a halo. Mm -hmm. That's how he came in, like, like he floated <laughs> into the, the rocks. But he, he was he's kind of short, so he kind of, kind of, he didn't stand too tall over the rocks. You know? So, he, so um, in the, the seat I was in, I was right in the center row, so I looked straight at, straight up at it, and, and uh, I really didn't, uh, I really wasn't too conscious of the, the activities going on around me, because I was so busy listening to what he was saying, and what, uh, and uh, digesting how that, of my thoughts, how, how, how I long for, to hear someone talk like that, to say, what he was saying. So, uh, so I just, I just, uh, just, I just overwhelmed, put it, make a little too short, overwhelmed by his, his presence and his vibrations were uh, trying to uh, get to me, kind of affected me quite, quite a bit. And uh, my mother, I think my mother was, my sister was sitting on this side, my mother was sitting over here. And my mother, she had said when he came out, she said, when he 
we start talking, she said, I heard this before. I said, you heard it before? She said, yes, man, something like him came came through. He was talking to some people down in the, in the yard. And I don't know if you ever lived in St. Louis or other places in Chicago. They have three or four family, uh, flats. You go on the back porch, there's a yard right where people hang clothes and do stuff. But, well, that, that was a kind of situation. You look out and see down. She said he was talking to some people down downstairs. He was saying some of the similar things he's saying there, saying now. And he said that was he said that was a long that was before that was before uh, sixty two. But she was talking about back in fifty seven. So she was talking about but no. She was talking about back when the minister was the message was, was on the was on the run. That's what she was talking about. He was. I don't know if he ever came through St. Louis then, but that's what she said. And so she became infatuated by what he was saying. So she had told me prior to me inviting her down to see it, that she didn't want to hear that kind of crazy stuff. But because uh, your brother is involved with some crazy stuff like that. I said, my brother. I said, yeah, Robert. He said, I said, where is he? I said, he's in Boston. I, I, she said, he's involved? I said, he's involved with this? She said, yeah, he's, he's talking about just white men with devils and all this. I didn't say to her, I said, okay, I, let me get his number and everything. <laughs> so I made my mind at that point, that's why I'm going to Boston to see my brother. But it's all because of her and my uh, sister. But my mother became a very close follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as a result of me coming to St. Louis to see that. But brother, you asked me that question, how did I feel about seeing the message? I really can't find the words for what he really meant uh, to me at that particular time. And the same thing affected me when I got to Boston. I saw Mr. Parker, who was Louis X. And I heard him, I said, oh, now he's totally on another plane. <laughs> and I heard lots of other ministers doing it because of time. But those two, uh, the messenger had a message that uh, he was talking about black people, but he was really talking about the world. He was really talking about when he was talking about the message. I don't be like Master Father Muhammad teaching. I didn't see that as a necessarily as one thing. I saw it as a, a, a universal thing. You know, like that knowledge. It's not restricted to the small. That knowledge had to come from high, from a universal base. Uh, then I found later on that's what it was. Especially when I found that when I was reading there once in belief, number 12. And I said, that was the whole purpose of them coming. To set that universal government peace with it all in peace together. Of course, I didn't know that at that particular time. But then we grow into the wisdom as we go along. So it was basically. Of my, of my take on the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And uh, another time I talked to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it made me realize that verbal conversation is, is uh, very inadequate to have a conversation with someone like the messenger and the minister. To talk to them verbally brings things down. You know, because the words that you choose can not really express but the vibrations that they all really they project them. But so that I don't really think I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but uh, that's that's what I am with the with, with the minister and the uh, and uh, the message. I don't really have too much conversation, verbal conversation with them. Because I feel like it is necessary to talk is necessary to do. You know, it, it, it ain't kinda of necessary about Conversate about what, he, what he's saying. How do we do what he's saying and make it happen, make it a reality? That's the only way we're going to be able to uh, resurrect our people by doing, not by talking. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, sir. So from St. Louis, you, you met her with your mother. She informed you, your brother Robert. Says, oh, yeah. brother Robert in Boston. So from that point on, you got a chance to reunite with your brother. Mm -hmm on a physical level as well as a spiritual level, yeah, spiritual. and at the same time, 